Generation to Generation. Hey guys, how are you doing? I'm Tade Osho. Welcome to the second episode of Football Time Machine. A show where we take a stroll into the archive books after doing a little research and delve into some of the juicy, juicy stories of the past. It was the year 1993, it was the FIFA Under-17 World Cup in Japan. It was also the rise and discovery of a football legend. Who burst into the scenes in the group stage of the tournament, scoring a hat-trick against Canada. He is the sleek, lanky magician and one considered as the king and one of the most gifted African footballers that goes by the name Nwanko Kanu. We're going to have a look at some of his mesmerizing performances, his skills, some memorable moments and his highs and lows. Well, without too much yada yada, let's get right into it. Winning the under 17 FIFA World Cup with Nigeria was the beginning of a new dawn for Kano. Not just winning the tournament, but winning against rival West African country Ghana. A rivalry that digs deep beyond the columns of the football pitch but into the territories of my mama's kitchen. That's if you've heard of Nigerian Jollof versus Ghana Jollof, of course. <laughs> Well, I digress, I just had to put that in there somehow, you know, for those that know anyways. Although scoring five goals in the tournament, Kanu missed out on the Golden Shoe Award to his fellow Nigerian teammate Wilson Aruma, who was also in top form in the tournament. His impressive skills and goal scoring abilities, however, didn't go unnoticed. He was spotted by an ex-Ajax player and scout, late Tony Pronk. Rest in peace, brother. This was the same scout responsible for discovering the greats like Zlatan Ibrahimovic, and Kanu's fellow Nigerian counterpart, Finidi George. Both of whom I'm going to talk about in another video, by the way. Kanu signed for Ajax after that tournament, a move which was rumored to cost around 207,000 euros. And the rest, as we know it today, is history. The man with the famous punk hairstyle had arrived, dazzled with some sumptuous skills, his brain work on the ball and delicious goals were exciting to watch. Under the tutelage of Louis van Gaal, former Manchester United coach, of course. Ajax did go on to win the Champions League in 1994-1995 season against AC Milan in Vienna, Austria. In the final game, Kanu came on as a substitute for the football legend Clarence Seedorf. Although he didn't score, he managed to create a chance for captain Danny Blind. They won the tournament thanks to a goal from Kluivert, of course. It was all needed to win, you know, the, the, the Champions League. Some of Kanu's Popular skills involved faking the player with his upper body and dragging the ball away from the player. A trait which today is done by Odion Igalo, who recently got loaned to Manchester United, a non-Nigerian international, of course. Another intricate, intricate skill is his close control ability, knocking the ball from one feet to another, getting past an opponent or rounding the keeper. All this he did in many clubs he played for down the years. The following season, Ajax once again reached the final of the Champions League. Kano in the starting line of this time against the tenacious Juventus side, which had the likes of Antonio Conte, you know, former Juventus and Chelsea Gaffa, and Del Piero, the Italian great. Although Kano came close to scoring with an attempt on goal, which was cleared off by Peruzzi, Juventus keeper, Ajax lost on a penalty shootout. A defeat for which till today Ajax felt cheated due to the allegations of you know Juventus doping program some years later. Till date, no other Nigerian aside Kano and Finidi Jod have played in two Champions League final. A record they will forever hold dearly to their hearts until that record is beaten, of course. It was the year 1998. Kano now playing for Inter Milan came on as a substitute for Italian. Defender Francesco Colin, Co Colonies, I think. I really mess up the names. I apologize, guys. I think it's Francesco Colonies, yes. And scores a goal against Atlanta. That happened to be his first and only goal for Inter Milan. The celebrations were so emotional. You can see the joy and happiness among the players. You know, but, but there was so much more behind that story. But before I tell you that story, let's track back to 1996 first. Before Kanu moved to Inter Milan, it was the summer of the 1996 Olympics in Atlanta, USA. The whole world was watching. 
parading boxer legends like the likes of Evan the Holyfield and Muhammad Ali, you know, both are ceremonial third bearers to mention a few. As a side note, that was the year before Mike Tyson famously beat Evander's ears, so his ears were still intact at that time. There he bites him there, you see him lift his teeth, and Holyfield in agony, it raged by that. Now what is the reference? I'm sorry, I just had to put that in there somewhere. Kano had another chance to show the world his substance. Of course, on the footballing front, managed by Dutch coach Bonfi Joe, a young Nigerian team was assembled, with Kano captain the side, of course. Off the back of just losing to Juventus, Kano had a chance to help Nigeria make history in an attempt to become the first African team to win the Olympics. The most memorable moment was the semi-final game against Brazil. Nigeria were two goals down at halftime. <sighs> Kanu scored two late goals, one the 90 minutes and of course a golden goal in the extra time which knocked Brazil out to you know, the third place game. Nigeria won the tournaments against Argentina in the final. Kanu made a bold statement following that win, and I quote, Argentina are good, but Nigeria is gold. Wow. Kanu was crowned the African Football of the Year in 1996. His stardom and popularity amongst Nigerians increased further, leading to getting some commercial revenues through product endorsements right, left, and center. The most memorable were the pig milk endorsements. One day, I know say you will make us proud. He's locked it over towards Kano. Kano. Kano scores. From generation to generation, P has been building the strength and dreams of Nigerians. Put your trust in P to grow a great future for you and your family. Milk at its peak. I'll talk more about its commercial accomplishments in my next video, okay? While well, returning from the highs of winning the Olympics, the enthusiasm and hunger for more success, Papilo headed to his new club Inter Milan in Italy, and it all suddenly became gloomy. A routine medical check was carried out on him, but he failed the medicals. He was told he had a heart problem, a 40 aortic valve was discovered. He was told he could not play football again. It was a big blow. It was like, Phew. <laughs> what you love doing, and uh, which you know how to do, and have brought you so far. Because at that time, I just, uh, the country have won the Olympics, and we are like on top of the world, and suddenly it happened. But uh, yeah, it's like you can't play football. So you're like, what am I going to do? But what happened next? Well, we're going to find out in my next video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon as well. Well, like I always say, fine wine tastes better with age, but so does football. I'm out of here, guys. Cheers.